Welcome to Auction Version 4, the latest event management software tool from Auction Systems. In this tutorial, in the Item Data Entry series, I will show you the Item Value panel. This is the Item Value panel. In this panel, there are fields for Quantity, Lots, Bids, and Shares, Item Value, Bid Pricing, and Sales Tax. Let's start with quantity. Quantity is the number of items that will be sold using the same item number. Usually, quantity is one because most often a donor donates a single item, but occasionally you may receive more than one of the exact same item from the same donor. For example, this item could be a retail item such as centerpieces for your gala tables. You might have 30 tables at your event and you have 30 centerpieces to sell. Rather than enter 30 separate items, you can enter the item only once and enter a quantity of 30. You can sell the 30 centerpieces to 30 different bidders. In the Lots, Bids, and Shares section, Sell as a Single Item has been selected. But if this item is really multiple items, like the 30 centerpieces that can be sold to more than one bidder, choose Sell Individually by Same Item Number. If this second choice is picked, you will be able to enter winning bids for different bidders for this same item number. The maximum number of winning bids that can be entered for this item will be equal to whatever quantity you entered in the quantity box. By the way, when sell individually same item number is selected, these choices below disappear. Now let's look at the bid section below. If this item is being sold as a single item, you have three choices to pick from. The default choice is to sell to one bidder, which is the most common choice for a single item. However, there are two other choices. Unlimited number of bidders is most often used if the item is a paddle raise or fund a need item in the live auction or sometimes in the silent. Unlimited means that a winning bid can be entered for an unlimited number of bidders for this item, for the same price or different prices. The multiple bidders share button is an interesting case. Let's say you have one item like a golf outing for four. This is a single item that could be won by a single bidder, but maybe four people want to go in on this item together. In this case, the quantity is one, but the shares is four. When you pick multiple bidders, you also must choose how the donor value will be divided among those bidders. If they all pay the same amount for their shares, then select Quantity of Shares Purchased button, and the donor value of this item will be divided equally by the number of shares purchased. But if one or more bidders is paying more or less than the others, choose Bid Amount divided by Total Purchase Price. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, I don't know if this golf outing will be sold to one person or be split among three or four people. Go ahead and mark it to sell as a single item with one bidder. At the event, if it turns out that several bidders want to split the item, there's a button in the winning bid entry screen that allows you to edit these choices before entering a winning bid for all the bidders of this item. In the item value section, you not only record the donor value of the item, but also how you want the value to appear on public documents, such as in the catalog and on bid sheets. Start with value per unit. If in quantity you put a 1, then the value per unit is the donor value of this single item. But if the quantity was more than 1, such as the 30 centerpieces, the value per unit is the value of 1 centerpiece. Value per unit times the quantity is the total value of this item and will appear here automatically when you enter the value per unit. The donor value per unit can appear on the winning bidder's invoice. If you do not know the value of a unit and leave this field as zero, on public documents the item will print as priceless. Or maybe you do know the value of the unit and have entered it so that the donor will receive an accurate receipt, but want priceless to appear on the bid sheet or in the catalog. You can click the priceless button so that the word priceless will appear on public documents. Maybe you prefer a different word than priceless you can press the plus button to add a new word to the pull-down and then select that wording for this item. Next we have bid pricing. 
This area is for the minimum bid and minimum raise. In the Settings menu on the main taskbar, you can set a default percentage of the item's value as the minimum bid and the default number of raises to get to full value. Then, if you select Automatic here, Auction will do the math for you and autofill these two fields. Even when you set the default minimum bid percentage and minimum raise as a setting, you can still override the autofill by clicking the manual button and putting in your own values in these two fields. Guaranteed bid is a buy it now kind of option that can appear on the bottom of a bid sheet for this item. Let's say this item will most likely be very popular at your event. If a lot of bidders will be trying to outbid each other for this item and therefore ignoring many of the other items on the silent table, a guaranteed bid for this item may be a good idea. Guaranteed bid is usually somewhere between 125 and 200 percent of the item's donor value and you can set a default percentage in the settings task on the main taskbar. Notice this button currently indicates that there is no default guaranteed bid that has been set. If I had set a percentage in the settings task instead of none, the default percentage would appear here. If the default guaranteed bid percentage is not reasonable for this specific item, click Specific Guaranteed Bid and enter a different percentage for the guaranteed bid in this box on the right. If this item should not have a guaranteed bid at all, click No Guaranteed Bid. If you're not required to charge sales tax on any item, then there's no need to set a sales tax percentage. But if you are required to charge sales tax on some or all of your items, set the percentage in the settings task on the main task bar. If your organization is required to charge sales tax and if this item is subject to sales tax, click the sales tax button. By the way, sales at your event could be subject to tax by more than one taxing authority, such as the city, state and county. But not every item may be subject to each authority's sales tax. Notice this space has room for more than one button. You could select which, if any, taxing authority or authorities this item is subject to. But those taxing authorities and sales tax percentages first must be set up in the settings menu for the choices to appear here. The next tutorial in the item data entry series will be for the designation panel. Thank you for joining us.